Hey everyone, Shark here. So as we roll into the last weekend of the Broken Arrow playtest, I wanted to put out a couple more tips and thoughts to help people get the most out of this weekend. So the first thing I'm going to cover here is a couple of units that you think you should have in every deck, regardless of the role you're playing. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how to compose a team for maximum success and the roles that individuals need to play and build decks around. And then finally, I have a couple of vignettes that show really good micro, mainly by my opponents, in ways that they defeated what we thought was a pretty balanced build and good coordination on our end. So uh, without further ado, we'll get right into the units that you should have in every deck. All right, guys. So what I want to do here is talk about units that you should have in every deck regardless of your role within the team, uh, especially if you're going to queue up uh, with randoms and not in a ranged team. So first off, Reconnaissance. If you have access to a drone, you should absolutely have a, have drones in your deck. Right, The Global Hawk is great. The Great Eagle is a good multi-role. It's just very fragile. Um, and then Snipers are some sort of recce team that you can put in buildings to laser designate, also really important. They require a lot of micro to use well, so they're not sacrificial lambs but critical for your team in general and for spotting everything else, especially if you're in a random team and playing by yourself. The next thing on the infantry front, right? I would say you need at least some mainline infantry because they're multi-role, right? And they allow you to hold terrain. Um, these can be really important if you, even if you're playing a support deck, right? And you want to set up a position and you want to protect it, a couple infantry squads in cover or in garrisons uh, can really support you. The other thing I'd say in the current meta, some sort of man pads. You've got to have it. Helicopters are very strong, especially on the Russian side. So man pads are the only way to reliably counter them. You just got to keep them in cover or in a garrison. Then on the vehicle side, obviously some sort of main battle tank is really helpful. It depends on the deck that you're playing. And I'll talk about some of the other decks where uh, your options are a little bit lighter. Um, but then the other thing I'd say is some sort of uh, tow launch vehicle or missile launch vehicle, right? They're relatively inexpensive. And if you set them up in ambush positions, you can rapidly react to enemy armored pushes and cause a lot of damage. Now getting into support, this is, I think, the most important part when you're playing a team game. If you have access to advanced air defense like a Patriot or an S-300, you got to have it, right? It's relatively inexpensive at 180 per and it adds so much value for your team in denying uh, enemy airplay that as soon as you can afford it, I would get one or two of these out and set them up. Just make sure you micro them well. The other thing is if you're not playing a support role, I would still recommend having some sort of tube artillery, right? Uh, Self-propelled howitzer. Um, the ATACMs, the prisms are great. The problem though is that if the enemy's got good air defense, it can knock out the missiles and make them kind of wasted. However, uh, the tube artillery is really useful across the board. You can use it for counter battery. You can use it to support your infantry pushes. You can use it to smoke advances, and then you can use it to punish your enemy for sitting in too much cover. So recommend having some sort of tube uh, artillery in every deck. Next, I would recommend having some sort of attack helicopter, particularly with uh, Hellfires or basically a uh, ATGMs. Uh, in it now i have some rockets on this is because i use the longbows as a multi-role but having a helicopter that you can move around again rapidly react to enemy armored pushes and punish the enemy um, these do need to be microed really deliberately sometimes using attack move or focusing on positioning and line of sight rather than right clicking on the enemy is the way to use these but super valuable they should be in every deck also uh, helicopters for supply if you've got them make use of them look at how much this carries this is uh, 12,500 kilos of supply that it can bring in. It's very fast and most of your supplies go into areas in the rear. So I recommend having at least one of these in every deck to keep your units well supplied. And then finally, uh, what I'd say for air is at a minimum, you need some sort of anti-air or seed capability in every single deck, right? If you're not playing a super air heavy deck, you don't necessarily need uh, counter air um, and actually right now with the air defense networks the way they are, uh, jets are not a great counter to helicopters unless they're really far forward and unsupported. Also, like obviously cruise missiles, uh, standoff munitions can be really helpful in terms of fires, but they're also super expensive. But what I think is an absolute requirement are these uh, seed capable aircraft. So harms on the EX you'll see in other decks um, that I've got here. I've got uh, prowlers lit up with harms, right? 
even if you don't have coordination from your teammates, and, and if, in fact, sometimes especially when you don't, this is the only way that you're going to be able to clear out enemy air defenses or at least force them to move to be able to advance and hold terrain. So make sure you always have some sort of uh, seed suppression of enemy air defenses in your deck. That's all uh, on this one. Make sure to throw in comments what you think. Um, I can go through the specific decks, but you'll see uh, even in this air heavy deck that I built, I've got all the basics, right? Recce, man pads, mainline infantry. Uh, down here, I've got some tube artillery. I've got some anti-air, even though uh, really missing the Patriots in this deck, right? Attack helicopters, supply helicopters, and then a lot of multi-role uh, uh, aircraft, seed capability, and then some anti-air. All right, now, if you're going into a game uh, with a three or a four or a five-man stack, you can afford to be a little bit pickier in your deck construction. And I think this is where this game gets really fun, right? As individual players kind of refine their roles. I think in general, you should probably have one player that's focused on uh, support in general across the map. So usually they have a centralized location. They've got a lot of air defense. They've got a lot of artillery. They've got a couple of helicopters to move supply around so they can support their teammates. And they probably have some airborne fires capabilities, right? The next role outside of support is an air heavy build. So this individual can help with some vehicle pushes, can help with some recce, but in reality, they should have a, a deck where the specialization allows for extra air. So for example, on the US side, the Marine Corps and airborne specialized build, it gives you a lot of slots for air power and a lot of slots for helicopters. That's where you want to invest most of your points. And then in reality, when you're in the game, you want to spend a lot of time saving up uh, your points to bring on aircraft and use them well to counter whatever it is the enemy's doing and support your teammates in that fashion. Then I think the other three players can focus primarily on ground combat. And obviously it depends a little bit on the map, but they should be uh, really vehicle and recce heavy early to kind of take terrain and then infantry heavy to hold terrain. Right. And so uh, having an armored specialization and then going either uh, Marine Corps uh, or airborne on the US side paired with that allows you to support that. But as we talked about, I think every deck should have certain components regardless. And so if you're ever floating a lot of resources, you you pull those larger units, right? The more important things like uh, the Patriots, S300s, the advanced anti-air, uh, supply, advanced fires, um, but you discount other capabilities. Like if your job is to focus on ground pushes, right, and you're investing all of your requisition into vehicles and infantry to hold that terrain, you probably shouldn't have a B-1B uh, with a bunch of cruise missiles in your deck because you're never going to get it out. It's just eating up a ton of requisition points. Um, so focus your capabilities on things that are a little bit cheaper in the role that you're not designed to play, if that all makes sense. All right, so what I'm going to talk about here, I have a couple of different vignettes lined up. Um, I apologize for the quality. It's a recording of a recording, but that way I could at least use the mouse and show you all uh, what I'm trying to get at. All right, this is an example of really, really effective seed against what I thought was a pretty re resilient anti-air network. As you can see, our team has four total Patriots here and up here, as well as some pivads providing support. Now, the enemy team has not had a ton of air defense. They've been relying on a lot of air and they recognize early that we had a lot of uh, advanced anti-air. So you're going to see them use multiple airplanes try to, to try to counter this and it's really pretty effective. So you hear the sirens go off here. Uh, I'm obviously microing elsewhere. And then as you come in, right, you see the first Patriot launches on this Eagle. These Patriots are or don't have their radar on, so they don't react immediately. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk about this Eagle here in a second. Now an F-18 comes in and distracts a second Patriot, which shoots elsewhere. So now both of these airplanes are essentially going to take one hit uh, and then survive. These Patriots start to launch, but basically they're inside the radar free range, which means uh, it's far too late. And then watch this run set up by the Eagle. F-18 knocked out, but that Eagle gets its full load and actually drops uh, two of the Patriots and two of the Pivads. So unbelievable seed run. One thing I want to point out here, when he brought the Eagle in, i rewind this briefly. When he brings the Eagle in, he has it at low altitude and it's already on drop heading until it's ready to make this run. 
And then once the Patriots start firing and he confirms their location, he dials in the bombing run and has a really, really effective result. All right, this is a quick little example of how to counter seed aircraft. So you see I have slam rams up here and then my teammate has Patriot pack twos further to the south. Now, as you watch, a prowler is going to appear yep, right here and it launches immediately. Now I have my slam rams uh, turn their radar off and you'll watch this missile. You'll see it comes in and goes dumb and strikes harmlessly behind them. However, the prowler is going to continue to volley missiles here at my teammates Patriot. So what I do is as soon as I realize he's focused the wrong way, I reactivate the radar. It takes a couple of seconds to spool up, but now the slam rams are able to get a few missiles off at the prowler while he's on the way back. Here, I want to show really excellent micro to include use of recon. So over here, I have two tanks. They've just recently been targeted by an F-35 using a JSAL. Uh, and I'm wondering where the designations come from because I cleared these buildings. Now you'll see the RQ-4 pops up. So this is what he's using, and he's done a great job keeping it to the rear where it's out of the sight line of our team's uh, anti-air. As this RQ-4 comes over, you'll see it spots the Abrams here. And now watch. Even though the RQ-4 gets shot down, look, you see those cruise missiles? It's like they're spawning from nothing. So that tells me that he is keeping his B-1 far to the rear where he can loiter it and then launch on it. This is perfect use of the cruise missiles, which have extremely long range, and it's a great way to keep from losing your B-1 and make sure that you get those requisition points back. And if you watch, he actually takes two different shots. I think both of these are coming in on my tanks. I try to dodge ineffectively. You'll see one tank or both tanks get knocked out, and then one of the Avengers also gets struck, the same one that shot the RQ-4. All right, everyone, that's really it. These are some just basic tips and tricks to help get you through the last weekend of the Broken Arrow playtest. I hope this has been helpful. I really appreciate all the comments you guys have been dropping on these videos. It's helped me learn a lot and then cue me in on things to go back in and test when I play. So that's all I got. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next one.